Hi there, this is Steve Kaufman. Um, I've been asked to comment on the language learning technique known as shadowing. And this is a language learning technique that is, uh, has been largely popularized by a Professor Argelis. And to learn more about uh, his technique and how he explains it, uh, I suggest you Google or search in YouTube for Professor Argelius, uh, A-R-G-U-E-L-L-E-S. He is a very accomplished uh, language learner and linguist. Uh, our shadowing essentially means to, to uh, repeat along as you are listening to the language that you're learning. And I think Professor Argelius particularly recommends walking around as you do it. So, I do not practice shadowing. Uh, that doesn't mean that it's not a good thing to do. Um, I think there are a lot of things that can be very effective in language learning. As I have said many times, uh, language learning relies, or, uh, you know, uh, success in language learning relies on three elements. One is the attitude of the learner. Two is the time you spend with the language, with the language, not necessarily in class. And three, your ability to notice, your alertness, your attentiveness to, to the language. So shadowing certainly um, constitutes time spent with the language. But there are so many things, so many different techniques, uh, and some people are going to like some and not like others. Uh, I have said before that I'm not a great fan of uh, spaced repetition systems. I prefer to control which words I'm going to review when. Uh, I also find that I'm so attracted to listening and reading and staying with interesting content that I just can't find the time to do some of these other things. Um, when I listen uh, to a language, I largely do so while doing other tasks. I rarely sort of dedicate myself to listening to the language, hardly at all. It's I just finished doing the dishes and cleaning up the kitchen. There was 20 minutes, half an hour between the pots and everything else of listening to uh, Russian. Uh, if I have dedicated time, I like to read. So if I'm going to dedicate myself to a language, I'll probably read. I won't walk around shadowing. I have tried uh, on occasion in the car, trying to repeat along, uh, but, but I don't enjoy it. I find it, it interrupts my enjoyment of listening. So I prefer to listen. But that doesn't mean that it's not a good thing to do. And I've heard people say that they find it very effective. It's a bit like uh, Pimsler. I don't like Pimsler because Pim Pimsler prompts me to say things, uh, answer questions, which I don't enjoy doing. Um, for that reason too, I don't like Michel Thomas because there's too much explanation and too much um, English in there. But other people find that it's the tremendous way to break into a language. So I think everyone has to find uh, whatever way works best for them. Um, so, I mean, there's basically my take on, on uh, shadowing. Uh, I, I, it again, gets back to this whole idea of, of when do we need to speak, when do we need to create output. And my belief is that, you know, my practical needs as a language learner here in Vancouver learning Russian uh, revolve around developing my comprehension. Uh, that is therefore to listen, to read, and to increase my vocabulary. And I will do some flashcarding uh, because I find it useful, but not in the expectation I'm going to learn all those words, but simply because it's an opportunity to reflect on words and how they're connected and review the phrases that come with them and so forth. Um, but uh, I, I feel no great obligation to speak. However, and, and the reason is very simple, uh, what I like doing in language learning to me has to be meaningful. So I will speak when it's meaningful to speak. So if I, uh, when I'm going to Russia now, by the way, I'm very happy. Uh, hopefully if I get my new Canadian passport and my Russian visa, uh, everything in time, then I should be in Russia basically, you know, from the 29th of May until about the 11th or 12th of June. And when I'm there, I'll be speaking all the time. And I'm quite confident that with the amount of input-based learning that I have done, when confronted with a situation where I need to speak, I will gradually start speaking and I'll speak better and better. So speaking then will be meaningful. So, uh, and I'll improve according to the needs of the situation. 
But right now, the needs of my situation in, in Vancouver, where I have very limited opportunity to speak, my needs are more to understand what I'm hearing. And, and I enjoy that meaningful interaction with the Russian language that I get by listening to audiobooks or watching movies or listening to Echa Moskvi or, or any of those things. And I have also been increasing my interaction with our tutors at Link and uh, three, four times a week. Uh, I will speak to someone in St. Petersburg or Moscow or previously was Magnitogorsk and, and that was great. But I do that for, you know, two, three times a week and uh, it has some impact. It makes me aware of where my problems are. But uh, now if I'm thrown into the frying pan or the fire or whatever of Russia, where every day Russian is is my environment, it's on the radio, it's, it's, I go buy stuff in a store or whatever, I know that my Russian will take a great leap forward. And at that time, output is meaningful. But in the meantime, while I'm driving in my car, you know, let alone walking around as Professor Argelius recommends, which I would never do, I go for a run listening. I can't imagine myself running, listening and shadowing at the same time. Uh, and I'm a bit of a nut that way. I don't tend to go for walks because I prefer to run because that's within a, you know, half an hour, 40 minutes, that's more concentrated exercise. Uh, if I go cross country skiing for two hours, again, I'm listening. I, I won't be shadowing because I'm working, working hard. So I wouldn't devote myself to walking around shadowing, but even in a car, I find it tiring and I'm, I'm, it's, it's not meaningful to me, but that's me. And I think it's very important that, uh, you know, if anyone read my book, The Linguist, you'll know that I talk about in the first little intro where I talk about Drungs's crooked tree and how the crooked tree grows off by itself, not in the plantation forest where all the trees are, are the same. The crooked tree follows its nature and is an individualist. And I think everyone has to be an individualist and has to find their own way to their own techniques of language learning that are most effective and most, most important, most enjoyable for them. All right, so I can only tell you what works for me and what I find enjoyable and what I think will be effective based on my experience, but everyone has to find their own way. And so shadowing is undoubtedly very effective for those people who enjoy doing it and who are prepared to commit the time to doing it. But that does not include me. I don't do shadowing. Thank you for listening.